The name for the dwarf planet Pluto was suggested by an 11-year-old girl. The girl was Venetia Burney of Oxford, England. Venetia's great-uncle, science master at Eden, Henry Madden, in 1877, suggested the name for the two dwarf moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos. This was referencing the fact that Deimos and Phobos were twin brothers, the children of the god of Ares, Mars in Roman mythology. They were specifically the offspring of Ares and Aphrodite. Because an 11-year-old suggested the name Pluto, and the Disney dog Pluto first appeared at around the same time, it has given rise to the myth that Venetia came up with the name after the cartoon dog. The fact of the matter is that while the dog did appear in 1930, the same year Venetia suggested the name Pluto, his original name was Rover. He didn't get the name Pluto until Moose Hunt in April of 1931, about a year after the planet was named. So how did she really come up with the name Pluto? As people so often did in that day and age, and not so much now, Venetia and her family were gathered around the table eating breakfast on March the 14th, 1930. Venetia and her mother were living at Venetia's grandfather's house in North Oxford, as her father, Reverend Charles Fox Burney, professor of interpretation of Holy Scripture at Oxford, had died when she was six years old. While eating breakfast, the topic at hand was the discovery of a new planet, which has since been demoted to a dwarf planet. Her grandfather, Falconer Madden, read to her the following article from the London Times. New planet discovered by Lowell Observatory. Professor Harlow Shapley, director of the Harvard Observatory, announced today that the Lowell Observatory at Flagstaff, Arizona, had discovered a ninth major planet. The planet, which has not been named, is beyond Neptune. It is probably larger than Earth, but smaller than Uranus. The discovery confirms the belief that the late Dr. Percival Lau, that such a planet existed, and in fact was the result of a systematic search for several years in support of Dr. Lau's belief. Professor Shapley calls the discovery the most important since the discovery of Neptune in 1846. Of course, they got the size of Pluto wildly incorrect, but the fact that the planet had not been named brought the topic of discussion around the table to what it should be called. Venetia was familiar with Greek and Roman mythology, and further had recently been acquainted with the planets and their relative distances from the Sun. After thinking about it for a minute, Venetia stated, I think Pluto would be a good name for it. Pluto is the god of the underworld who could make himself invisible and generally dwelt in a place that sunlight doesn't reach, so it seems fitting for a dark, remote planet. Her grandfather thought it was such a good name that he immediately went to suggest it to a friend of his, Herbert Hall Turner, professor of astronomy at the University of Oxford, who was attending a meeting of the Royal Astronomical Society, RAS, in London at the time. There was a heated debate in Flagstaff and the RAS meeting over what to call the new planet, but nobody involved had thought of Pluto. Turner wrote back to Madden in response of Madden telling him of Venetia's suggestion. I think Pluto is an excellent choice. We did not manage to think of anything at the RAS yesterday. The only at all meritorious suggestion was Kronos, but that won't do alongside Saturn. As an aside, the Greek equivalent of Saturn is Kronos. Turner then sent a telegram to the Lowell Observatory at Flagstaff stating, Naming new planet, please consider Pluto, suggested by small girl Venetia Burney for dark and gloomy planet. At the time at the Lowell Observatory, the leading candidates were Minerva, Zeus, Atlas, and Persephone. When they heard the name Pluto, many loved it, as it was not only fitting from a mythological standpoint, but Pluto also started with PL, which would be homage to Percival Lau, who, as mentioned in the Times piece, played an integral role in the search for Planet X, the predicted ninth planet of the solar system based on irregularities in the orbit of Uranus that could not be wholly accounted for by Neptune. It should be noted, though, that their estimates of the mass of Neptune were incorrect. Planet X did not actually exist as far as Lau defined it. Lau died 14 years before Pluto was discovered. When it finally came time to vote on what the new planet should officially be called, it was unanimous. Pluto. It should be noted that while Venetia is often credited as being very clever in her choice of Pluto, in terms of having thought about subtle connections between the unnamed planet and the god of the underworld, she doesn't remember giving it that much thought. In an interview in 2006, she stated, Whether I thought about a dark and gloomy Hades, I'm not sure. Although she also noted, I can still visualize the table and the room, but I can remember very little about the conversation. So she may have simply forgotten how she came up with the name as her grandfather shortly after the event, presumably with a slightly more accurate account, given it was fresh in his mind, certainly credited her with giving it a fair amount of rational thought. So much so, in fact, that he wrote a thank you letter to her teacher, K.M. Claxon, shortly after the name was chosen, stating, I really believe that had Venetia been under a less capable and enlightened teacher than yourself, the suggestion of Pluto would not have occurred to her, or, if made, it would have just been a vague guess. 
as it is her acquaintance with some of the old legends of Greek and Roman deities and heroes, and that nature walk in the university parks by which she was taught the relative spaces between the planets and the sun, and the gloom of distance enabled her to grasp the once special elements of the situation, and to be first to make a suggestion so reasonable as to be accepted, it appears, by the whole world of science. By the way, the nature walk that he was referencing here was where they would take the students outside and go for a walk while teaching them. In this particular walk he is discussing, Venetia and her fellow students played a game in the park. As she said, Putting, I think they were lumps of clay, the exact right distance from each other to represent the distances of the planets from the sun. Whether she actually thought about the name in such depth or not, the scientists who ultimately did pick the name did think about those things when naming the planet. So finally, on May the 1st, 1930, the director of the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, Vesto Silfer, announced the name of the ninth planet to the public. Venetia initially received little attention for being the one who thought of the name, but her grandfather did give her five pounds, 247 pounds today by retail price, but 758 pounds today by average earnings in 1930 in Britain. Venetia said of this that this was the typical type of thing her grandfather often did for her, stating, as a grandfather, he liked to have an excuse for generosity. Her grandfather also donated, as he called it, a scrap of paper, and sent the letter noted previously to her teacher, Miss Claxon. It stated, In grateful recognition of you, her teacher's share in Venetia's triumphant naming of the new planet. The money he sent was later used to purchase a gramophone for teaching music appreciation. They named the gramophone Pluto. Her teacher also had this to say in response to the letter, which I think contains two snippets at the end, which are amazingly quote-worthy. All will realize that our part in this was small, and that much is due to Venetia's mother, who herself taught Venetia and steadfastly sought the best for her. But I venture to think that this letter will be an inspiration to others as it was to me, showing as it does how big doors swing on little hinges. We are unable to assess our own work, but we have been shown the bread of life, and if we freely cast it upon the waters, it will truly nourish. So I really hope you liked that video about Pluto. If you want to watch some other videos, you can check them out right here on the side of the screen. Um, just a couple that I'd recommend you check out. And don't forget to subscribe, there's a link below, and also a button here.